Good evening. Welcome. This is our presidential lecture and performance series, and I've got a special guest for you tonight. But before we get started, if you're a student of Mars Hill University, would you stand? Please give them a hand. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. These lectures are for you. There are a lot of people in this room tonight that are on faculty, staff, a lot of people who went here, but these things are for you. And so we're doing these things to bring speakers here that you can hear and see all, the, all these things that are going on in the world. And uh, I appreciate you coming out. I have tonight uh, Becca Pizzi, class of 02. The, the topic is Becca's Feet on Feet, Dream Big, Take Chances, Believe in Yourself. This is, this is a huge thing. Um, as I was trying to decide who would be the first speaker in this series since my time here, I wanted someone uh, that would fit with the theme of my first few months here, and I have been challenging the campus to stretch, to reach, to push yourself. We did that with Bailey Mountain last Monday. Some, some of us went up. Some of us made it to the top. Uh, I did not make it to the top. But I'm, I'm glad we want you to uh, think like that while you're here. And that, that applies to staff and faculty as well. So the Mars Hill community is going to stretch, reach, and push ourselves this year. And so the, the speaker tonight exemplifies that. Y'all, you know, the Presidential Lecture and Performance Series complements our emphasis on the liberal arts by bringing distinguished and knowledgeable individuals to lecture on a wide range of topics and provide high quality performance and cultural arts. So during the year, you'll get to see all types of different things like that. Becca, as I said, is class of 02. She lives in Belmont, Massachusetts with her husband, Joe, and 10-year-old daughter, Taylor. She's the first American female to run the World Marathon Challenge in 2016. Seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. Becca recently went back and made history by running it a second time. Running it again, breaking the world record. Six days, seven hours and 58 minutes. She majored in sociology, participated in track, cross country and soccer. She attributes her success to the love and support of coach Mike Owens. Mike, I'm scheduled next week to go back to uh, where I came from. One of my basketball players from my high school coaching days is, is going to give the convocation speech at the Governor's School for Science and Math in South Carolina. And I can't tell you um, what a moving thing that is. I can't imagine how you feel tonight to see someone that you have had such an impact on and with your team right around you. So congratulations. This is a big night for Mars Hill. It's a big night for Coach Owens and our, our uh, cross-country program, track program. So, Becca, thank you. You honor us by being here. And I know everywhere you go, you, you fly the lion flag. So thank you, and please come talk to us. Thank you. It's such a privilege for me to be back here on campus and telling you about my journey and I hope to inspire you. And Coach Michael Owens, when I did this for the first time, met me in Miami and the support that I'm still receiving to this day is second to none. And when I came down here in 1997 to visit, I didn't need to see anything else. I fell in love with the campus and loved Coach Owens so much and I knew that, that I was lucky and fortunate to be going to school here. And I read about this opportunity to make history to run seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. And I asked my daughter, what do you think about this? And she said, yeah, mom, I believe in you, you can do it. And I asked my parents and they said, no. <laughs> they thought that safety was a major concern and they were nervous and um, it, it, was, it was an incredible journey. And I had so much fun. I've always been drawn to the ultimate test of endurance and strength and getting to represent Mars Hill um, in, in the community who really rallied for me because I laid my dreams out there and you supported me and I just feel so grateful. And people always say, well, how do you top not only running but winning seven marathons on seven continents in seven days? In 2018, I went back and I did it again. 
This time I had a lot of support from Tom Brady's company, TB12, and they documented my journey. And I know you guys, I'm in, I'm in Cam Newton territory, so don't hold this against me. But I want to show you there that they documented my journey, and then um, I'll take you through some slideshows that I have, and then any questions that you have at the end, I, I would love to answer them. So um, the second time that I ran this, so this is the, this is the documentation. Seven different marathons on seven different continents in just seven days. This is Belmont native Becca Pizzi's second world marathon. First time anyone has ever run this race twice. It is an incredible feat, a historic win. And I said I would never be back, but, but I'm definitely excited and looking forward to doing this again. Nobody's ever done it twice. Frozen continent, we're off. We're going to do it. a good start in Antarctica. My card was up and I was ready to take on the next six marathons. Cape Town, let's do it. At Cape Town, Africa it was hell. 90% humidity with 85 degrees. That was, that was the toughest one for me. We are in Perth, Australia, about to run the third marathon. Beautiful. The spectators were amazing, cheering me on my first name. It was about 85 degrees and humid. We just touched down in Lisbon, Europe, and we're here for our fifth marathon, number five. Let's go. Lisbon, I had friends and family there, so that was really, that was a supportive group, and, and we ran on the river, and that was a beautiful course, and I felt good. That was my fifth marathon, so I felt like I was ready to give some more. I was holding back a little bit, but felt good to be working hard. Cartagena, Colombia was hot, really hot, so that was, that was one of the toughest ones for me. TV12 was such a huge role in helping me achieve my dreams and make history. 
I'm so grateful to be part of the family. My biggest advice to you is find your World Marathon Challenge, dream big, and take chances. So that was the document that they, that they came out and they supported me. When I ran this race the first time, I tore my groin at miles, marathon six mile two. And I remember Tom Brady saying in the Boston Globe, we didn't come this far just to come this far. So I got up and I took one mile at a time until I crossed the finish line in Australia. And you know, when I crossed the finish line, my parents were live on Skype and they said, we did it. And I said, we. So. <laughs> Going, going forth, we're now we, you know, and it's, it's just been so fun. But um, I wanted, when I was given this opportunity to do this again, I knew that I could do it again. They had changed the locations, and how could I do this stronger and faster? You know, it was, it was my goal to run this race better, so I, I was lucky to work on pliability with Tom Brady's company, and um, we worked on nutrition and deep tissue massages, and um, so I have we'll take it, this is the second time. The first time I was given number 13 and my dad's like, lucky 13, and my mom's like, don't touch it, that sounds very unlucky, so this time I was given 41. And some fun facts about the seven days where we crossed 16 time zones, we ran 183 miles, temperature ranging negative 10 to 91, we flew 23,000 miles in seven days, flew 59 hours and averaged 12 hours per continent. So in my training and during the 777, my motto was get comfortable with being uncomfortable and you'll make it. So day one, negative 10 degrees. I wanted to send a, a picture home to my parents letting them know that I was okay. So <laughs> what's it like to run in Antarctica? It's you're running on a glacier and at any time it can rip open. So when you hear bing, it's a really scary feeling. So. I just tried to keep my guard up. You're running on a glacier, which is kind of like packed down really hard sand. And the sun is totally blinding, and the wind is fierce. So you kind of feel like you're going nowhere. It's really exhausting to run a marathon in Antarctica. But you think, if I can just get through this one, then I'll be OK. So we flew in on the military private plane, the Russian Illusion. And um, if you can see in the top left, it's kind of bucket style seating. So it's, and then I slept on the floor, and top right is your pilot. So you just look up and your pilot's right there. It was very, very different being on the Russian illusion. This was at mile 23. Running by the, the pl um, plane every time was really hard because my body was going towards the plane to get on it, and <laughs> I, I knew that I just had to keep going straight. But you know, it was, I, I had so much fun in Antarctica, and I went to Canada to train. People said, how did you train for this? Well, I went to Canada to train, and um, where it was negative temperatures, and I, I ran in the Summit Series clothes, which they climb Everest in, and this photo was taken at 2 in the morning. So in Antarctica, it's 24 hours of blinding sunlight. So it's really intimidating. Finishing off and finishing Antarctica, I got off to a good start, so I was feeling strong and confident, but still scared out of my mind. So you're going from negative 20 degrees to 89 degrees in Africa. So you're you're totally your body's kind of like in shock. So, but from this point on, we were on the Airbus 340, which was absolutely beautiful. We had a couch. And then the seats, people said, where did you sleep? We slept on planes that laid flat down into beds. But people said, how did you sleep? Well, we were so tired, we just ran a marathon. <laughs> Cape Town. We saw, at Boulder Beach, we saw penguins. We didn't see any in Antarctica, if you're wondering, but we did see them in Cape Town, which was pretty cool. It was 90 degrees, I was really feeling kind of we ran by, by an active volcano in the back, which was really cool, crossing the finish line. So Marathon 3, Australia has always been one of my favorite locations to go to because, you know, the, the, the spectators are so friendly and nice, and this time we were in Perth, Australia. But you travel all the way to a continent, and you run at 10 o'clock at night, so you see nothing. That was the hard part.
the race director of the Boston Marathon ran it too with me and um, it was fun to have him there and he brought a lot of media with him so that was fun. Marathon 4 Dubai Asia and this was the exact course that I tore my groin on the two previous year so um, I was back for revenge. The Burqa Khalif is the largest building in the world. It's in the back. It was nice to see, you know, each continent running it again. Touchdown at 10 o'clock, running this race at midnight, just because we only had 168 hours to finish. The different cultures. I got to Skype with my daughter after every single continent, which was something for me to look forward to, and having her support and she, her whole school did homework based on where I was and what I was doing and every single day she got to go down and change the runner and when I when I crossed the finish line for the first time she got to she got pulled out of her class by the principal's office and brought to the principal's office where she could announce for the first time my mom finished and she she just made history and she finished strong and there was like a roar throughout the school and you know she is my number one fan but she doesn't like to run and that's okay <laughs> So Marathon 5 was in Lisbon, Europe, and this was the first nice weather day that we got, so it was 56 degrees. So finally, after four marathons, we had a nice weather, but it was around at 10 o'clock at night. All of the courses were out and back, and, or a circle loop, so they could keep an eye on us. So Cartagena, Colombia was definitely the hardest one. It was 91 degrees when we landed and you know I knew that that it was going to be a long day ahead of me and this little team of runners greeted us as we were getting off the plane but the race was run at nine o'clock at night so they were sleeping and couldn't watch. But it was one of my favorite locations because it was really beautiful. I got lost in Colombia. The problem is I could, you can't read the signs, because they're in other languages, and nothing will scare you like being lost in Colombia. But I teamed up with, I found some of the runners, and we wound up running the rest of the race together, and I was happy to be. And I was fortunate enough to have friends and family on every continent to run with me and support me, and this is my training partner, Jenny, and we've run like 15 Boston Marathons together, and so lucky to have all these friends and family saying, where do you need me, And except for Antarctica, because nobody likes me that much. <laughs> so Marathon 7 ended in Miami, and my friends and family and a lot of everybody came, my yoga instructor and coach came, all these people came out to support me and cheer me on, you know, and it was nice that we ended in this time Miami first we ended in Australia so a lot of palm trees in Miami and this picture of my daughter crossing the finish line with me went viral because 50 years ago women were told that their bodies couldn't handle the distance of a marathon so fast forward 50 years and I'm crossing the finish line for the second time with my daughter by my side and my husband holding the finish line tape it's just a moment that we'll have forever and that I'll never forget you know and People always ask me for advice, you know, and, and like I said in the video, is my advice to you is, is to find your world marathon challenge, whatever it is that you're passionate about, musical instrument, a sport, and dream big and take chances, but above all, believe in yourself, because when you do, anything is possible. And, you know, I got into the Guinness Book of World Records, and blood, sweat, and tears went into, you know, me being a mother, and I own a daycare and manage an ice cream shop, and, but it's well worth it, you know? So when you ask yourself, can I climb Mount Everest? Can I run a marathon, run a 5K? Believe in yourself and know that you can do it, and you will do it. So that was the journey, and does anybody have any questions on the 777? Anybody? Yeah. So, how many people dropped out? So, the first time there were 15 of us, and all of us finished, which is a small miracle in itself because you see some pretty serious injuries over the seven days. And the second time, just one didn't finish. So, when you're not, as much as you are racing these people and you're there to win and represent your sponsors and um, your family and 
when you're not in a good place, everyone kind of rallies behind you to make sure you're okay. What do you need? How can I help you? Kind of a thing. So the second time, only one person didn't finish, and there were 50 runners the second time because we chartered the Airbus, I mean, the, the plane. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, the first time when I tore my groin, it took one month to recover. And, you know, I had a great relationship with my doctor, and I went in and I said, what happened? And she's like, seven marathons on seven continents in seven days happened. Your body just gave out on you. The second time when I had the um, help with TB12, Tom Brady's company, I crossed the finish line without an injury. So I was able to run two days later. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a time when, what happened? Yeah, so basically, so we only had, was there a time that we, we yeah, we, we were under, we could only average about 10 hours per continent, including from the time we landed to starting the race. And so we had about, it was a six hour cutoff, but some people, if you were one of the faster ones, you could go across the street to the hotel. You wouldn't shower, you wouldn't sleep there. You would just shower there, eat there, and head directly to the airport. So if you were one of the slower runners that took like six hours, then you went directly to the airport. You didn't even get a shower. So... We all had, we averaged about, we had about six hours to finish each marathon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, leading up to the race, to the 777, I know you do all your training. When was the last time you ran before you actually did the challenge and how far? Did you run a full marathon like five days before? So, the first time that I did this, I ran a, a marathon. My last marathon was one month prior to this, this 777, and I said, whatever this marathon time is, I'm gonna add 30 minutes to it, because I obviously can't keep the pace that I wanted to run for seven days, and I thought 30 minutes buffer would be like a perfect, so I ran that in like 329, and so I said, I'm gonna keep these right around four hours. So all I had to do really was cross the finish line to make history, but I'm so competitive, and and I really wanted to set the bar really high, so I went out a little faster than I should have and got in a little bit of trouble. Whereas the second time, I backed off my pace, more, listened to my body a little bit more, and worked on my body. So you had to keep your guard up for seven days because any little move that you make, if you don't stretch out your body or foam roll or use the stick or hydrate properly, or, then it would end your seven days. So that was, that was the hardest part about it. Yeah. So the race entry fee was forty thousand dollars, and I, I thought if I if I paid this and my daughter ever needed it for anything, a wedding or school, or I would feel so guilty. So I thought I can team up with a spo corporate sponsor and they can pay the race entry fee, and then I'll just go and do motivational speaking for them. And my husband Joe, I was in the Wall Street Journal, and they sh and he shared the article and the. Fr the same day, his boss, who owns BMW, says, I'd like to sponsor her. Who's sponsoring her? And, and I didn't have, I, I just had announced that I was doing it. And so he, he had paid the race entry fee. So we have a great relationship now. And every time I tell him one of my dreams, he's like, I, I, got, I got it. You know, I got it. And, and he's just such a, he lost his wife to Alzheimer's. And, you know, he's like, it's, this has given me something to do and something to look forward to. And he, he is my number one fan up there with my daughter. And I'm so proud to tell him what I've done. And I think sometimes when I see him, he goes and hides because I think he's like, what does she need money for this time? What is she doing this time? But we joke about it. And he's, he's, I'm really lucky to have that support. And I'm endorsed by Lululemon and some other companies, too, that, that I feel so lucky that, to have their support because I wouldn't be able to accomplish my dreams if it wasn't for people supporting me. Yeah. So to train for this, I was running between 70 and 100 miles a week. So it was very hard work. I did this for one year. And I, I'm a mom to my 10-year-old, and I own a daycare and manage an ice cream shop. So all my training was done at 4.30 in the morning. So it was very, very hard work for that year. And I, that's when I kind of adopted the get comfortable with being uncomfortable, and, and that will be your new normal, and you'll do it. So there were definitely days when I was too tired to stand up, but I would just talk myself through it. I said, just, just get up and do it, and you're so fortunate to be able to be doing what you love, but um, 
I, my life's kind of like a puzzle. And people, you know, I feel so fortunate to be doing what I, all the things that I do because I love everything that I do. So it doesn't really feel like work to me. But I feel, you know, just if you have a goal, a big goal, and lay your dreams out there and tell people what you're doing, and then they'll support you and rally for you. Yeah. So you talk a little bit about when you're on the plane in between, um, in the air. How much are you sleeping? How much are you phone calling? I mean, I gotta imagine that you're, you're rolling constantly just to try to get the body back to some semblance of. That's. Yeah, so what we did was, so my very first, it was really hard when we crossed the finish line not to cheer on your new friends because you want to cheer on each other. You kind of feel selfish like going directly. So I would cross the finish line, go directly across the street to take a shower at the closest hotel and, um, and immediately work on my body. And there were days when I was like, I'm so sick to my stomach, I can't even, I don't have an appetite, and I, but you have to just little at a time. It's kind of like being sick again. It's kind of like having the flu and recovering from the flu. You, and then the hardest part is you'd get into a deep sleep on the plane, but you'd have to get up. You don't want to stiffen up because you're going to have a real bad day if you stiffen up. So you have to get up and walk the plane. And you know, you'd kind of like see everybody else doing the same. Everybody had the same goal to finish. And that was kind of like the, the hardest part was working on our bodies. And some of the my marathons that we started, you're going into the marathon and you're just like so fatigued and tired. So you just have to stay focused and take one mile at a time. In the beginning, I was starting out, my height, my, I was drinking, having the goos, you know, like the goo. I was having two and I was having them at eight at 14. By the last one, I had one like every three miles. Everything was out the window. I was just so hungry and tired and doing everything that I could to, and I was also, I was racing. When I signed up and announced to the world that I did this, this professional runner called me and told me that she was running it too. And I was like, well, I'm just going to embarrass my, this is just really going to be totally awkward for me because I just announced that this was my goal to come in for my, my New Year's resolution. It was like, you know, eat better and something else and win the 777. And everybody's like, you're doing it again? And I said, yeah, you know, I'd like to do it one more time. And um, so I had to figure out how to outsmart her and out, out beat her. And, you know, so I, I was racing up until all the way to Miami and the seventh one. So it was really hard. But um, rolling, working on our bodies was the toughest part. You know, people say, what was the hardest part of the entire thing? For me, it was being away from my daughter. You know, I always feel like leaving her is the hardest part. But working out on our bodies and stretching when you don't feel like you just want to sleep, that was really, really hard. Yeah. So my diet, so I'm not the healthiest eater. I love Doritos and you know that's oftentimes runners like to pig out and that's what we do and, and I own, I manage an ice cream shop so I eat a lot of ice cream you know so when I went to meet Tom Brady's company they were a little bit mortified they were like wow but we appreciate you being real so you know they said how, how important is this to you are you willing to, to eat healthier are you willing to so I did so we worked on that now they're introducing the plant-based diet to me so I said let me finish out the 50 states and then we'll work on the plant plant diet because I don't want to be fatigued and I want to be but health your health plays a huge role you know what you put in your body and and you know how they say your car your, your body's like your car if you don't treat it properly it's not going to run and it's just a true testament to you just have to eat healthy and you have to take care of your body and sometimes you can do everything right like my dad has done everything right and he's went in for open heart surgery you know and he couldn't be healthier and it's not his fault and but it's enough to scare me to do everything right and eat healthy and and especially having my daughter it's I we have to talk about eating healthy and preparing our bodies to, to perform well and but the heart the most important thing to me is my hydration you know making sure that you're drinking tons of water and giving yourself a fair shot at the day yeah. Have you already set future goals? Yeah, so my future goals, so um, I'm finishing a marathon on all 50 states, and in 2020, I'm prepping to run across the US. So that would be 46 miles a day for 42 miles. 46 miles a day for 42 days. So, um, you know, I, I have big goals, and I always have my entire life, and I'm drawn to like seeing how high I can I set, set the bar and I enjoy these big things and um, that's gonna that might be too big so I'm too I'm gonna run across Massachusetts now where I live and then I'm gonna um, run to Canada and if I can do those two things and I'm gonna attempt it yeah so my biggest so 
whenever I go into a big race or anything that I'm doing, I find my inspiration, why I'm doing what I'm doing, whether it's for sick kids, whether it's for my daughter. It's a, so when I ran the 777, my friend overdosed on heroin. And I, I went to this Boston Bulldogs re recovery team and I started to coach them despite having never touched a drug in my life. And I thought, if they can fight for their lives, I can fight for my dreams. And it definitely put things into perspective for me. And so oftentimes when I'm running and things aren't going my way or I'm not having a good run, I think about the inspirations behind my run and I run for those that can't. Yeah. So Becca, I remember you. <laughs> No, I always felt so lucky. I remember Coach Owens, I remember I said, can I come home to run the Boston Marathon? And my friends were like, and he said, yeah, just don't get hurt, you know? And, and I went home to run the Boston Marathon and my friends were like, that's so unfair. We didn't get to go home to run the Boston Marathon. I said, well, I have an awesome coach and an awesome college that supports my dreams. So you, Mars Hill has always been huge, my, you know, support to me and, and I feel so lucky and I always had, big dreams and I, and I have failed so hard in my life you know I've had so many time, moments in my life where I've just got it wrong but I've gotten it right a lot too you know and my dad said he was so anxious and nervous when I told him about the 777 it was in during the heart of ISIS and he was like really nervous for me and you know he said be the second American female and you know and he I said he said what if you don't what if you don't do it you know and I said but what if I do you know, and I've always had that kind of attitude that believe in yourself, that you can do it. And, and I've learned that from my dad. You know, he always said that Henry Ford, he said, just like Henry Ford said, if you think you can, you're right. And if you think you can't, you're also right. So believe that you can, and you're right, and you'll do it. Yeah. I don't want to give up that, I don't want to give up the lifestyle that I have now to, to that window has, I'm almost 40 in the Olympic team, but I would like to coach at the Olympic level. You know, and I, Meb Klefeski, his, he followed my journey and, and he's been a huge support, so, yeah. Can you speak on your time here for the Mars Hill as a student? Kind of how that, that shaped you? And um, is there anything from your time here that, that you still think is one of the biggest and that's kind of major as well? The cl what I loved most about Mars Hill is the, is the friends that I have, is, and still really good friends with. The, the support from my friends running here. And I came out a semester earlier than everybody. I came out the summer where I met John. And um, John also graduated in 2002 and now works here. And it, the, the bond that we met, we took a couple classes kind of to get a jump start. I think John came from Florida. I came from Boston. So this was a massive culture shock for me. So everybody was so friendly. <laughs> I'm like. People, you know, I go out running in Boston, I'm like, good morning, and they're like, no, thank you, we don't want to buy anything that you're selling. And I'm like, no, I'm saying good morning. Like it's a, So coming here and people, like, they were so, it was so awesome. You never forget what that feels like. And even being back on campus and everyone's, hello, ma'am, how are you? It's, it's just unbelievably different. And I would love for my daughter to come here. And, and I did everything here. I also said to coach, when I played an intramural soccer game, and the soccer coach came up to me and he said, you should play you should be a walk-on for soccer. I said, well, you gotta work it out with Coach Owens. If he says it's okay, then I would love to play soccer because I love playing soccer. And, and the fact that you let me do that, again, you said, don't get hurt. <laughs> so you, you, this school is so loving and there for you. You're not just a number, you're a name and everybody knows who you are. And, and I got whooped on a run with the cross country team yesterday. And Nyla, you guys are like, such a bond, you know, I mean, running with you guys and hearing that you guys went white water rafting as a team together, that's so awesome. You'll always remember that and supporting each other and cheering each other on and the whole team came out and it was so inspiring to watch that that hasn't changed. You know, I went here when it was a college, now it's a university and nothing changes. The bond is like incredible and it's so awesome and inspiring to watch that. And that's what I remember graduating in 2002, and it's still the same, you know. And I, I majored in psychology and loved the courses, loved taking classes. I took, I took like pottery. I took everything, everything that I could do, and I, and I really loved it. And, and I'll never forget 
as, as I was signing on, you know, I was like in the office with coach, my parents had already bought out the entire school, you know, uh, store school with shirts and hats, and I'm like, well, now I have to go. They still have, and they still support it, and, and they're proud, we're so proud to be from here, and um, it's, been, it's been such an incredible journey, but I, I owe so much to where I am now to this university. So, yeah, I would like to go back. I always said I would go back to one of the locations because we don't enjoy, but then I want to go like other places where we can't run. You know, so go to somewhere. I love to travel, so we just went to Barbados, which was an incredible trip, and, and I didn't, we went on a cruise, and I think we went on a cruise because can't, you can't really run on a cruise, so I'm like, did you choose the cruise because you know that I can't run on a cruise? So we had the time of our lives, and I like to get out of the country once, once a year and go to different places, and it's, I love to travel, and but I, I'd like to go back to Australia. Australia is always one of my favorites. Dubai is really cool. The places that the the locations that are chosen are really different and unique. So, um, but we don't really get to see much of them. But we did taste the foods, and I had a I had a dessert on all seven continents, which I'm really proud of. And and <laughs> it was obviously ice cream in Antarctica. But it was you know it was I have an ice cream flavor named after me, which I'm psyched about. It's the Becca Seven, and it has seven ingredients, and it's a s'mores based. And, and I think that's so fun. I think that's a dream come true. You know, and the production team said, let's take one ingredient from each continent, like the Moroccan cookie, and the, I'm like, who's gonna eat that? That's so gross. So my daughter said, mom, let's do something with s'mores, and we love s'mores, so we did, and it sells out, and it's really good. So if ever you're in the Boston area, let me know, because we'll go to the Red Sox game. I got to throw out the first pitch at Fenway Park, where my husband asked me to marry him, and, that was awesome. I got to, you know, that was nerve wracking. And my dad said, if you don't, you know, make sure you throw a strike or they're going to boo you out of the stadium. And so I threw a strike. And so that was really, that was a fun day. And it's given me so, you know, laying my dreams out there. And it's just given me so many opportunities. And, you know, I got a, I got February 4th is Becca Peasy Day in Boston. I got a key to the city and all because I believed in myself, you know, so it's been, it's been so much fun. Yeah. yeah. So I started running when I was six years old. My dad took me to a five mile race and I won my age group because I was the only one in my age group. <laughs> and I won this like really ugly water bottle, but it meant so much, I still have it, and it mean, meant so much to me that, so on the way home, my dad was a big runner, my dad's dad was a big runner, so he was like taking me from six, and I remember saying to my dad, if I win stuff, that means, like if I run fast and I can win something, and he's like, yeah, that's kind of how it works, and I love that feeling, so I'm like, take me to every race that we can go to, and so, but people are like, that's abusive, I'm like, no, I like doing this, <laughs> so, my daughter doesn't run, and she's like, the problem is the sweating part. <laughs> and, you know, she actually is in, she's 10 years old, and she's actually competing in a, um, she's tr essentially preparing for the Olympics at 10 years old. So she trains for three and a half hours a week, and a day, three and a half hours from 5 to 8.30. And to watch her be so passionate about her sport, it's just so awesome and inspiring. So, um, you know, she's really competitive, and I think she gets that from me, I don't know. And it's fun to watch her, but I never thought that I'd have a daughter in gymnastics, and she just said the other day she wants to play the violin, and I'm like, well, of course you do. You couldn't be any more different than, than my goals, but I'm so proud of her for having her own goals and her determination. Yeah. Did you speak a little of yoga in your yoga? Yeah, so here's the thing with yoga. When I go to yoga, I don't know. Like I have to, I think about all the things I need to be doing besides yoga, and I'm not. I don't understand those like different moves. So they would say, "Becca, eyes on your own mat." I'm like, "Well, I don't know what you're, what's, what they're doing." So, but once I started to commit to yoga and doing and stretching, and I felt better and felt stronger. So I would wake up feeling like a stronger athlete. And so I did yoga for one year, and it really helped me. But getting in that mindset was difficult because I would like make lists of things that I needed to do when I, the second I left yoga, and I couldn't. It would hard, be hard for me to. So, and I'm not really flexible either. Run, runners tend to not really be flexible, but that that was. So I was kind of like embarrassing myself, and my my toes were always the ugliest from running. So, yeah.
Yeah. Four. So the first one, how many pairs of sneakers did I wear? So the first pair was, um, they get trashed in Antarctica. They're wet and you don't want to be like the smelly American with the wet sneakers. So I tossed them and then it rained in Chile. So, and then my parents met me in Miami and they swapped out two pairs of sneakers. So I was down to, so essentially four pairs of sneakers. So those are, typically everybody brought four. And also your feet swell so much that you go up a, shoe, a size. So. They go, you go up a, one full size because over the seven days your feet swell so much. Yeah. What were the brands? Like, I, I ran in Newton. So Newton's based out of Colorado and they make a marathon sneaker. So they're really supportive of me. And yeah, they're really fun. Check them out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think opposites attract. So my husband doesn't run, but he's, he's so always been so supportive of my dreams. And it's not easy to be married to me because I always have big dreams and, and he's so supportive of them. And um, I feel very lucky to have, to have you supporting my dreams. And he came on all seven continents and he would tell me like how my lead of the next and just having him there and he would cheer for everybody and having him there was meant the world to me and we met on a charity walk for cancer so it was it's he's he's been great and my role model but I'm so happy to have him you know supporting me and in my crazy dreams yeah but he doesn't run <laughs> someday someday maybe he'll do a 5k <laughs> yeah. yeah do you have a question So I wake up every morning, mostly every morning, and run. And then, so I go to my daycare from 8 to 4.30. And then my ice cream shop, I go in and I check on the high schoolers who need to be checked on from 4.30 to 7. And then have dinner with my daughter, or I'll take her to, she's in gymnastics about 30 minutes from my house. So I'll go there and work out there for the three and a half hours across the street at the gym, and then eat dinner. And so, you know, between every day, it's every day I'm doing something um, mostly every day it's running and then my daughter and you know all those everything the ice cream shop and the daycare and sometimes they just go but I have really good help in my daycare and at the ice cream shop so I feel like um, I can go a couple days without being there but I'm, I'm, I go seven days a week yeah any other questions Thank you all for coming. I see some alums in the house. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. I heard her say a couple of things. One thing I heard her say, I would love for my daughter to come here. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of coaches right here. <laughs> Believe in yourself. Be confident, strong. I'm drawn to seeing how high I can set the bar. I find my inspiration. Fight for your dreams. Y'all hear that? Incredible. Thank you. It's been a great night. It's an honor for us to have you. We look forward to seeing you later in the season. Thank you for coming. And I've got two things. If you're, if you're here to get some well, wellable points, wellness challenge points, there are young ladies here. Um, raise your hands with the pads. OK? And if you're here for the community engagement points, also see them and they'll, they'll take your uh, ID number. But make sure you get your points and get credit. So thank you very much. Have a good evening.